Welcome back to my QGIS Road to Nerdvana series. Uh, in this series I dig into different aspects of QGIS and show you how to do things or just show you what I'm trying to do on QGIS. Uh, in this episode I'm going to be building a 3D scene from scratch. This is based on somebody on Twitter that asked me um, how did I make this um, farm scene that I um, posted on Twitter. So. I'm going to be building the whole scene, well, a similar kind of scene, but more simplified version, and show how I did things like um, create the roofs with pitched roofs and um, uh, add the texture for the grass and add the trees and, and create, yeah, just all the different pieces. I'm going to do a simplified version, but the concept is the same as what I've done in this, in this uh, demo that I shared on Twitter. If you um, if you have things that you want me to show you, you can always reach out to me on Twitter. And I'm trying to every Friday, no matter how busy I am, kind of put a little bit of time aside to do something creative and um, explore QGIS or make a video or do something interesting with QGIS. So if you've got some ideas of things that you want me to cover, uh, feel free to reach out to me, and I will see if I can. If it's interesting, I will try and include it in my plans. So, I'm just going to start by giving a bit of an overview of the process. I made this little diagram just to kind of lay out what I'm planning to do in the session. The session might go on for probably about an hour. So, uh, you could probably scrub past to the bits that are interesting, just uh, if, if you're not interested in the basic setup. Um, so, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating four layers. One for the terrain, which just can be basically a square area. Um, and that will be a polygon and then I'm going to create a buildings layer which will also be polygon layer and then a roofs layer um, which will be a polygon Z layer in other words it will have 3D geometries uh, and a trees layer which will be a point layer and it will have a height attribute. The roofs layer will also have a roof color and we'll play with changing the color based on um, an attribute of, uh, of the layer we can also look at making a textured roof um, layer if we want to in 3D. And then the same with buildings, we'll have the wall color and terrain, we'll just have a name for the area. And so um, the goal is that we can digitize in QGIS some building structures, and this is now just shown from the side view. What we want to do is basically figure out for the roofs, um, the roofs are going to be uh, kind of manually captured so we could have figure out okay our building is is here and the building uh, roof line extends out maybe one meter from the side of the building so we're going to figure out the coordinate space to digitize this plane but in 3d so that would be basically going into this direction here and then this plane in 3d as well and kind of make try and make them all connect together so I've just got this little diagram just to show you how we kind of use some like um, imaginary um, coordinate reference system on our head while we're kind of figuring out the Z coordinates for the roof. Um, and then I'm also going to have uh, just do some testing with the, with the textures um, for 3D. So I've got a couple of resources, uh, one for roof texture and one for the ground texture. And I've got also a 3D model which Raymond Nason kindly made for me in Blender. So um, it's it's quite a simplified, it's supposed to be an olive tree, but it's, you know, it's uh, simplified because QGIS, if you're painting thousands or hundreds of these on the, uh, on your QGIS scene, it's going to be quite slow. So we try to keep the polygon count low, but um, yeah. <clears throat> and that will be using, um, sort of uh, to represent a lot of trees all over the map. Okay, so I'm going to start really from scratch and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new geo package um, because I'm going to put everything into um, a geo package. So uh, I guess there's different ways we can do that. And by the way, this is kind of unscripted. So if I run into problems or something, I'm just going to um, show you all the issues I might encounter because I'm using a, a development build of QGIS 
some of the things I'll show you might only be available in QGIS 3.18, the next release of QGIS. So I'm going to create a new database here. And I've made a little project folder here called 3D Scene Tutorial. And I'm just going to call the GeoPackage 3D Tutorial. And then I'm going to start adding my layers. So just remember back in my diagram, I had, um, uh, I think I called it, what did I call it? Camps. terrain okay so I'll give it a small letter name uh, for the name that geometry is going to be a polygon I could make it a polygon Z as well if I wanted to make it sort of like curved on the landscape but I'm just going to keep it simple for now um, and not include the Z and I'm just going to have a name attribute all right and so now we've got a new connection here called 3d tutorial and it's got this one layer in it um, and I'm going to add more tables to it one for each of the um, uh, of the ones in my diagram so next would be buildings um, just use singular for all the names and I'm going to add a field called all color um, And this is going to be a text and I'm going to add another field for um, height and that will keep as an integer uh, or let's make it a floating point and the geometry type should be polygon again Okay, so now we've got two tables, and now I'm going to add the third one, which is going to be for the roofs. And this one is important, we're going to make it a polygon, but with Z geometry, with a Z dimension. It's important to have that enabled. Okay, and then the last one we're going to do is going to be um, trees. I'll just call it tree to keep my naming consistent. And here I'm going to have a height, and we'll make this a decimal number and point. Okay, so now I've got uh, four layers in my project. I'm going to save my project into this tutorial file as well. I can share the tutorial with you afterwards and you can just open the project. So I'm going to use the save to geo package here. I'm going to choose my 3D tutorial here. I'm going to call it Okay. Um Okay, now you can see the project is saved inside of my geo package. Um, and then the first thing I'm going to do, it added my um, terrain, but I'm going to add my other layers here as well. Because it, um, let's see. And I'm going to go and add um, a background layer like, uh, let's use OpenStreetMap. Okay, so I've just, um, it doesn't actually matter where I am in the, on the world, but I've just sort of, um, just going to go somewhere on the map and just, I just want to make sure I'm sort of in world coordinate space, so, okay, so I'm just going to use this patch of land over here. So what I'm going to do is one by one I'm going to just create a couple of features in these layers and the most probably challenging one is going to be the roof one because I'm going to have to work out this uh, roof pitch 
which I haven't prepared, so you're going to watch me um and ah a bit while I try and figure out what the, the dimensions of this um, will be. So let's start by creating our terrain. Now, a lot of people miss these tools, but in inside the edit menu, there are tools for creating regular um, shaped features. So I'm going to add a rectangle here. Um, like this and I'm just going to go something like that okay and I'm going to call it grass something like that um, I've got to of course put that at the bottom there there we go and then I can save that one and what I think I will do is I'll already start building up my 3D scene as we go, so you can see how the map evolves. So I'm going to add a new 3D map view. Um, it doesn't like the fact that I'm not using a projected CRS, so I'm going to just switch to 385.7, a pseudo Mercator projection. All right, and then try again. And then I'm going to just dock this into the top half of my screen like this. All right, so um, there's my view in 3D of what I've already drawn, and um, I'm going to sort of just tilt it on its side a bit like that, and um, it should be more or less flat onto the Earth's surface, yep. Now, now what I want to do with this is I want to style it so that in 3D it has this grass effect. So I'm going to go to the 3D symbol here and choose single symbol. That's actually a little bit weird. The size comes out differently <laughs> to the 2D version. For the 2D style, um, I kind of want to keep the style around for when it's um, being viewed here, but not here. So the different strategies I can use, for, for now I'm just going to keep both. Um, later I can make different themes um, here and make a 3D theme and associate it to this map and then make a 2D theme and associate it to this map but I'm gonna just leave it as is for now now I don't want to use uh, just a simple color I want to use the texture for this one so I'm going to be using the realistic textured pong shading here and um, I don't know if it's pong or fong <laughs> but uh, and then I'm going to go and pick my texture file here um, I'm just going to take it out the correct folder. Okay, so when you look at it, it looks just green, and that's just probably because it needs some scaling applied. So I'm going to just give, give it like a 500% scaling. My cue just is having a bit of a think. It may be crashing right now. <laughs> okay, so it's crashed. Don't worry. We just pick up where we left off and try again. Like I said, I'm using the development version of QGIS um, and it may just crash randomly <laughs> at any given time. So we just have to deal with that as we go. I'll just save my project often. I did forget to save my layer, I think, so I'm just going to recapture that. Um, let me just go first put the project into pseudo Mercator again save again and then edit add rectangle okay and then I'm going to go and enable my 3D view again dock it in the top I'll just save my project every time I do anything that sort of 
changes the state of it. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to the layer styling here. I'm going to choose 3D, single symbol, realistic textured pong. I'm going to put the scale first to 500 just to see if I can avoid it crashing. And then I'm going to choose my texture here. Okay, and let's just zoom in a bit. So even with it at 500, the texture is, you can see it's just there, it looks like something interesting, but I'm at like a, at a super large scale by the time I've done that. So I'm going to just bump this up to like something like that, maybe even a bit more. Uh, maybe even a bit more. Uh, I'm maxing out what it's allowing me to do. And there I think I'm crashing again. So one strategy for that is I could go and use a different textured layer or uh, change the scale of the textured image here. Um, let's go and try to do that. I'm just going to open it in GIMP. And I did warn you I'm going to be <laughs> just uh, doing things on the fly and figuring them out as I go here. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and reduce the resolution. If we look at this image, it's 1300 by 1300. Um, so I'm going to change the um, the size of it to like let's say make it 300 by 300. Um, and then um, do that to fit the canvas to the layers and then uh, overwrite that and then we'll try again I think Q just has finished crashing so we'll just go and start it again Okay, and then um, hopefully it's remembered a bit more than we had last time. Where do we get to? I do believe I forgot to <laughs> save my layer edit. So this time I'm going to add that that uh, polygon in and then save my edits. Um, add rectangle. Cross. Okay, and then I'm going to straight away save my edits here. Then hopefully you won't forget that again. And then we can go back to layer styling and let's see if it's going to work a bit better with, um, with that new texture. Um, it's kind of sort of remembered that, but also not showing it like that. So I'm just going to go and maybe just change something and then change it back and we still need to scale it by the looks of things I'll scale it up by a thousand percent okay I think that's going to be fine when we move in uh, a bit closer, it looks a bit grassy like this. And if I switch it into 3D and we've got a building here, it will look like we're on some grass, I think so. I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to just save my work again. And uh, I think I just, the purple is irritating me, so I'm just going to go here and uh, uh, just change this to maybe just an outline. Make it nice and fat here. Something like that. Okay. And then we'll save our work again. So that's my terrain. Next, let's do a tree. Um, so I'm going to just capture a tree or two in this scene. Um, I'll give them different random heights.
Okay, so you could add more as, as you need to. Uh, we don't see the trees in 3D yet, so we want to go and um, kind of set some 3D symbology for the trees here. So this time I'm going to be using, uh, instead of one of these default ones, you just can pan around and have a look at our trees as cylinders. Um, it's not so interesting to see your tree as a cylinder. I can actually get rid of this terrain in the background. I think it'll just speed things up a bit. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do instead, and I'm just going to quickly go here. Um, I just want to close the 3D scene and, uh, and create a new one because it's still sort of like and get rid of this open street map now because it still thinks that that should influence the extents for the map and open street maps obviously global um, and I wanted to think we're just like working in this local little area so okay so here we go there we go now that is rendering artifacts I don't know why it does that. That's something relating to uh, internal gubbins of the 3D engine. Um, you'd have to ask uh, Martin Dobias or Belgesim to to explain why how to get rid of that. Uh, it's probably something to do with my texture as well. I'm going to ignore that for now. Uh, we could come back and figure that out in a future one. What I want to focus on is making my trees look like trees. So I'm going to go to my 3D symbol here. Instead of cylinder, I'm going to choose a 3D model. And remember this blender model that I showed you in the beginning? That's what we want to pick. So I've got that stored on my disk here as olive tree onebj And so I just need to find that over here. Um, All right, and then I'm going to have some issues with the scaling of that because uh, by default I think it's quite small. So I'm going to try just go like this and see if that helps. Okay, so I chose quite a big area and you can see <laughs> it actually looks pretty cool. But I think what I want to do is just, um, woohoo, that's nice. I want to just um, try to digitize maybe a bunch more close to this particular tree. So I'm actually not sure which tree this is on my map below here. So that's a bit of a challenge. Um, I could try to just add another one. I think it's maybe, yeah, I'll just sort of randomly add some more and see where they start popping up. So let's put one next to there. And um, to get the scene to refresh, let's just go out again. I don't know which way around I've spun it and what have you. I think it must be these two here. There we go. So, there's one of them there. Let's have a look. We could, of course, just scale the trees up really big as well. Let's maybe just crank this up a bit and say make it 50. Uh, I should say nothing in here. They're going to be like representing like real world scale now if I do this. Uh, okay, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, in reality, you're going to be setting numbers and uh, scale factors and things based on you know real life building sizes and so on. I'm not going to worry about that for today. I'm just going to focus on just like assembling the scene. Okay, so we've got our 3D scene. These trees look a bit dark and I don't know why they've gone dark because um, when I did my 
my walkthrough demo that I posted on Twitter, uh, on Twitter uh, they had a much lighter look about them. And I don't know if it's, I'm just going to go and check. Um, so that will cast some shadows, which I love that. That's a nice feature there. You can see each tree casts a shadow. Um, and the shadows are based on the lighting. The item creates like a cartoony effect on it, but it makes it a bit darker again. So I'm just going to disable that for now. Um, okay, let's let's go on to the next thing. Let's make a building. So I'm just going to stop editing here and make a building. So I'm going to put the building right next to these two things. Now I'm going to try to capture the building in a way that I can figure out what the dimensions are for the roof and um, that's going to be the challenge. So um, I'm going to add a rectangle. Um, Okay, so let's go like this. We're going to go here. Now, I should probably have the advanced digitizing tool bar and advanced digitizing panel open here. And I think none of this stuff is going to work because I'm in my layers and geographic projection. But let's see if we can go enable that here and set some construction rules. So, okay, they were getting some numbers, that's great. So if we're starting, let's just go start again. So we want to be able to do, um, we want to lock the distances. So we're going to start here. That will help us make it square, which is great. And there we can see the D. If you look at this D over here, we can see the distance. So I want to just get it in a very round number. So I'm going to go and actually peg it here to 100. In real, in the real world again, like in my model that I did before, I had to go and um, I had to go figure this stuff out based on the actual di dimensions of my house. So I'm kind of cheating a bit here to make my life easier. So by locking that into 100 meters, you see the circles appeared here on my digitizing screen. So I can only digitize like the next point onto this the perimeter of the circle. So if I do that, I should get a nice square um, feature. You see the angle is 45 degrees from the point to the center. And um, the dimensions should be 100. Oh, it's going to be, hang on a minute. So I want to actually do... Um, if I do 100 there, then it's going to be 100 on the diagonal. Uh, it's going to be 200 on the diagonal, but not on the edge. So I think I'm going to change my um, capture mode. Yeah, and this, yeah, let me change my capture mode here to say um, add rectangle from. Um, three points. Let's try like that rather. So we put in our first point. Now we're going to lock it into 100 meters. Whatever that is there. We'll lock that in there. So now we're going to do 100 meters in that direction. And now we're going to lock it in again to 100 meters. Like that. And then we're going to lock it in again in this direction here. That's not at all doing what I want. Oh, it's taking the diagonal. Um, so no, let's roll back again. Add rectangle. Let's try this one here. So we start here. We're going to lock that in. And I can actually keep this one. That will save me some time. Then I can basically make every step should be 100 meters. Oh dear, what have I done now? Let's start 
Sote. Okay, wall color. We're gonna do. I'm gonna make it something revolting, or maybe I'll just do like hash f e f e f e. That's great. And the height I'm gonna do now because I've done it meters <laughs> and everything's like out of proportion. That's a hundred meter building. I'm gonna make the building of a square box just to make my life simple. So I'm gonna do hundred meters as well there. All right, and then I'm going to save my work. I hope you managed to follow along. I'm just basically, the, I can do a whole other session on <laughs> digitizing, but um, the point of this session is not really to show how the digitizing stuff works so much, but um, to show more uh, like the 3D stuff. So there we go. There's my building. You can see it's sort of more or less in proportion to my trees, although my trees are probably like 50 meters <laughs> big, which is fantastic to have such nice big trees. Now this thing, let's get some 3D style going for this. So this one, I want to extrude it, and I want to extrude it by 100 meters. Now I could put 100 meters in like that, but because I've got data bindings now in the latest, I think this has only came in the, uh, maybe it was here before, I'm not sure, maybe it's in 3.16, um, I can't remember when it was added. So I'm going to take the wall height over here, and you see I get nice square box here. I'll just save my work again. So I've got a lovely square box for my house. It's maybe a bit big compared to the trees, I don't know. Maybe I should make it, um, yeah, maybe I should make it just 20 meters high or something like that. It will be a little bit big. So how do I do that? Well, because it's all data bound now, I can go in here, I can just change this to 20 meters. So 20, all right, and then save. We just have to kind of force a bit of a refresh here. So uh, I normally just go something like that, and then uh, like that. Okay. Cool. Okay. So we've got a building. We've got some trees. Um, I also want to make the building's wall color uh, data defined. So this is definitely new in uh, three sixteen. We can set these uh, diffuse, ambient, and sp specular colors. So, if I remember what Niall told me, diffuse is when there is no light falling directly. Oh, I forget which way around it goes. One of them is when the light is falling directly on the object, and one when there's no light on it, and so on and so on. So, I'm just going to go and uh, take that from the wall color there. There we go. So you can see that gray that I chose for the um, for here is actually showing up now as gray on the roof, and then I can do the same. Let's do for each of these here. Um, now that changes how the walls look a bit, um, and then um, I think I'll just leave it like that. Now it's hard to see the definition of the building, so I'm going to go and enable edges here. And then we'll just basically draw in the building edges um, all around it. It creates again some artifacts and things which um, you know I'm not going to try and figure out now. That's something to ask the, the gurus who, who built all this stuff. Uh, maybe try and get them in on a session and they can help me figure out how to avoid getting those things. Or maybe they're just bugs, I'm not sure. But I kind of like anyway that sort of textured look that you get. It makes it look uh, a little bit more like a something in uh, with you know light falling on parts of it and not on others. So there our scene is, the scene is starting to gather some momentum. These trees are bothering me a bit, the, the color, and I wonder if we can, uh, if the color is maybe coming from there, there's a material attached to these trees. What I'm going to do, let me just check I didn't copy the material over here. So I don't know why they come out so dark all the time. I want them to be one a bit lighter. One thing to mention about these models is that you can't color different parts of them different colors unless you get a bit tricky. So what, what uh, Raymond actually did for me originally was he actually made a separate model, which I can see if I can put it up here. Um, he made a separate model for the leaves, which was just, uh, and for the stem. So, 
you see here's the leaves and this one um, and now I'm going to run out of my blender skills very fast here but this one you can see he's got like a, a separate tint on it and then he made a separate one for the stem so again I can uh, import that one um, and you see it's got these material files which are giving them their colors when they show up on the scene here so he made that and that would be lovely if I could get my um, models and queue just to look like that but to do that I think I'm not going to try to do that now because it's a separate session but basically what I have to do is add the trees in twice and then uh, set the color for the model um, in the one to sort of a brownish color and then put the on the second copy of the trees put the leaf uh, use the leaves as the model and make sure that they got a um, uh, an offset from the ground so that they land up in the right place um, so yeah I don't think I'm going to try to do that right now I'll come back and show you another time how, how to do that or just focus on getting the basic scene right anyway they're bothering me but I like I said I think I'll focus on the roofs for now and uh, otherwise the video is going to get very long <laughs> um, so we're going to capture some roofs now I want to capture the roof so that it has an eave that hangs over the side of the roof on the one dimension and I'm going to capture it in two parts I'm going to capture a square here and a square here <coughs> because the eave for eaves will mainly hang out in the one side but not on this side it's kind of how I'm envisaging my house just like a little house like a kid would draw it so uh, let's go and put it into digitizing mode and we're going to go at a rectangle and now I'm going to go and use this mode again I'm going to set some construction rules I want to have the mid line the midpoint of this line actually that's going to be quite important so what I will do is actually I'll digitize the roof with some extra vertices um, and I also want to when I capture it um, I want to capture the Z value so um, I think I'll come back afterwards and try and add the Z values in so let's go first of all we'll start from this corner here I just want to just check if my snapping rules are set up here um, so I want to enable snapping and I want it to be on the vertex which is great I want it to be on all layers um, which is great and yeah that should be that should help me really so you can see it's snapping now to the corners as I start to draw my rectangle so let's start there um, now what I will maybe do is if I can I know that this is a a hundred across and if I go and dimension this here to say I want to do it like uh, let's say we want the eaves to hang 10 meters over the edge so if I set it to 60 like this yeah then I can lock that into 60 uh, I thought that was a hundred across but maybe I'm wrong let's go measure this quickly that is ah no <laughs> I, don't, I must have screwed something up. I thought I had it at exactly 100 by 100, but okay. So that's 54.712. That just really makes the maths a lot more fun for me. So I basically want to be like maybe I'm going to recapture this because I'm I'm now not happy with it. Let's go and do it again. Let's go to building edit. Um, I'll add a rectangle. From center and point, um, I just go with this one. So we're going to start there. We're going to go. We want to go an exact distance across 25 meters. So I think that's a bug because that if that's 25 meters and that's 50 meters it seems a bit out to me but um, 
Let's see anyway. Let's have a look. I'm going to get rid of the other one. And um, I'll just do something to make it redraw the scene again like that. Okay, so there's a smaller building. Let's measure that. Uh, it could be something to do with the fact that the layer is also not in the same coordinate reference system. Um, okay, hopefully somebody like Niall's watching and, and s trying to figure out why <laughs> it comes up as 19 there. You see I'm sort of concerned about this measurement here when I had set it to be very precisely 20. Let's assume that it's because my layer is in geographic coordinates and my scene is in uh, in the Mercator and the two things are basically um, th there's some rounding errors that happen as I move from the one to the other. Um, okay so I'm going to try to just kind of roughly work out so um, this thing here if it's 19 19.343 across I'm just going to go with my calculator here 19.343 divided by 2. So I want to be hitting um, 9.6715 across. Uh, so I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. Okay, so we're going to lock that in like this. Um, we're going to do this on the roof layer. Um, I'll do it like that, yeah. And then we're going to start from there. And then we're going to put that distance in here, which is in my clipboard now, hopefully. I lock that in. Okay, so again, there's weird stuff happening, and I think it's because the layer projection is different to the scene projection. Otherwise, I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm just going to capture that anyway, and just let's make this red. Okay, and then I'm just going to try and resize it a bit. But maybe uh, first, let's just go to this tool here. And uh, you'll see that it says the vertex editor, right click on an editable feature to show its feature vertices. If I go click over here, I can see the list of vertices and then I can start to edit the Z values as well. So I'm going to just, uh, let me just try to move some of these things around. I want to set these construction lines. And then I'm going to take this one here and make sure it's. Uh, let's see if we can get it perpendicular to that one. Oh, yeah. Screwed that up. Let's try again. Oh, actually, let's put that on there and then we go to this one here. I think some undo is called for there. I think I've got an extra vertex. Okay, so let's keep that now perpendicular like that. Okay, it's irritating me because it's not snapping where I want it. I don't like this. Uh, I almost feel like it's 
introduce some geometry error there. I just want to go and see there's five vertices. I want to get it very precisely snapped to that line. So let's set the snapping rule to uh, segments as well. And let's just take this one again. I'm also going to just zoom in a bit because it's much easier to work if you zoomed in. Let's take that again. There to there. Great. That one there. All right, then I'm going to pull these ones in to here. It seems like there's an extra vertex here, maybe. Let me just try again. Okay, now I'm just, it's rough, but I'm just going to show you um, kind of the effect we're going to, we're trying to get. So I'm just going to save all these edits here, just in case we have another crash at some point. Um, but I'm going to edit this one more time just to set the Z values for the for the roof. So if the, if the building is about 20 meters high, I'm going to just totally eyeball this. I'm going to put this above the, um, the roof, uh, the, the roof above the building. If the building's about 20 meters high, um, let's go and just put the roof on in 3D so that you can see how things evolve. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so you can sort of see it under the underneath the building there. Let's zoom in a bit more here. Okay, now it's sort of gone again. It's there, you can just see a little hint of it. Now, as I change the values of this and refresh the 3D view, you should be able to see um, the roof sort of moving up uh, into the right position here. So let's go in here and right click on a vertex again. So we're on that first corner. Let's make this 20. And then. Uh, we make this one 20. Now we're in the middle of the roof line and we want this to stick up a bit more. So we're going to go something like 30. And then we're at the middle of the roof line. So we're going to go 30 and then back down to 20. And let's save those edits there. And then um, just try to turn it off and on again. Aha! So now you can see, okay, it's sort of in the right place, but not exactly um, like we wanted really to touch the, the edge of the building. Now to get that, you've got to go like figure out your measurements properly. I'm not going to sit on this video and try and get that all perfect because it will take too long for me to figure out. Um, but you get the idea of what where we're going with this. So we've got something like looks like a bit of a roof, and then um, I want to have the same thing going on on the other side. So I could just copy this um, polygon I've made and then flip it over. So let's try to do that. So I'll take this. We're going to copy that, put it back into edit mode, paste it, and then we're going to go and say. Uh, we want to flip it, so I just have to remember where the option for doing that is. Um, um, well, we could just use the rotation tool, I guess. Um, Let's first just move it over to where we want it. Uh, 
I'm just going to show you the um, the 3D scene as we do it so that you can see what's actually happening. So now we've got another one there and then we want to flip this so that this part is this side and this part is this side. So I'm just going to go here and rotate it um, and I'm going to do a 180. All right, and we can just save that again. Turn it off and on again. All right, it's a little bit skew looking, right? But hopefully you're getting the idea. And um, now I just need to try and adjust things a little bit. And I'm going to do it again manually. Normally we want to do it like a bit more um, sort of mathematically, I should say. If you want to see the update of the preview, just hide and show the layer every time. Um, so let's have a s look how our scene starting to develop. All right, uh, hopefully you're getting the picture. We've got shadows, we've got trees, we've got textured grass, we've got a building with a uh, roof pitch on it. You can see that the edges don't properly match and everything in this. The, the angle is not quite right. So I don't want to spend the whole video sort of tweaking that. You you hopefully get the idea. If you want to tweak that, um, you've got to just go into into the um, edit mode, use the vertex editor, um, right click on a, a, a node, uh, and then go and start tweaking these numbers. So if you want to make the roof pitch lower on the one side, you go change all the 20s to 15, for example. And if you just do trial and error, you'll find some like happy medium where... Um, okay, so you can see I've gone too much there. And so you can go like 18, 18. This is totally not mathematical. This is just bodging your way until it works, but that's fine. Okay, that looks not too bad, right? And then we know the other one must be 18 in, um, as well. So we can go to this polygon here. Uh, let's just select nothing. Go to that one here. Let me set these all to 18. And then hide and show it. Okay, there's still something wrong with the dimensions of this this box, and it's going to bother me. So I'm not going to um, leave it like that. I'm going to just quite quickly go and try to fix it. I'm going to do also very just trial and error. So there's a nice tool here for moving the edge. So if you select an edge like this, you can pull that out of it. So again, I'm just totally doing this trial and error. I think I moved that a bit skew. Let me just undo that a bit. Um, take the edge and hide and show it. Oh, so I'm moving the wrong edge. So we want to move this edge over here. Okay, that's starting to look a bit better. All right, and you could imagine if you used your imagination, you could make doors, for example, by just making a polygon layer, but you have the Z value go like zero to two, and then, uh, but but it's like uh, occupying, that's basically it's a flipped up polygon, flipped up on its side. Um, and so you go on. So I think I will stop. Uh, changing those things there and then the last thing I was going to show was just how we could use a, a texture on the roof so that instead of having this um, oh that gap's going to bother me I'm going to just try to shift those two things a bit closer together quickly let's go there quickly
Right, it's very kludgy, and again, you should do it using proper digitizing approach, but I'm just trying to do it roughly. But um, turn it off and on again. Okay, cap's not too, too bad now. Um, I'm going to show you how to texture this roof now. So we're going to go back here and just again use a textured pong and I'm going to grab the roof tiles um, that I have here and uh, again it needs to be scaled up and I can't remember what a good scaling is but maybe 500 something like that maybe 1500 there we go something like that now we get a nice like roof feeling. This side's black because the light and the shadows are falling on there. So if we um, if we went and changed the scene lighting, um, um, yeah, you can see there's a light falling from here. And if I move this around, it should actually be changing. Uh, maybe it's uh, what is, why is it doing that let's move this down the sky a bit you can see our shadows are changing there which is lovely um, I actually don't know why that's always showing black because if I put the sun this side I would expect that to show red um, one difference might be just something in the attribute table. No, they both got the same attribute. Let's just look at the options here quickly. Uh, the ambient is when no light is falling on it, right? So there we go, that's changing it there. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. Um, I think I'll wrap up there. I've been waffling away for about an hour. Um, I hope you get the general idea of uh, like what the approach is. It's certainly very manual and uh, uh, kind of kludgy the way I've done it. You, if you're doing real things, like when I was doing my farm, I went and measured things and I tried to use, you know, like uh, the digitizing tools optimally so that I could get things to snap together. But since I'm just trying to sort of slap this demo together quickly, I think it's pretty good. Um, uh, at least hint f for getting you pointed in the right direction to actually doing some of the stuff yourself. If you go and make something, and I'm sure you'll make something more <laughs> beautiful than what I've made, please share it and uh, let, let us see what you've made because it's always, I mean, I just love the 3D stuff in QGIS. It's always nice to see what people make. I love anything that's like visual and cartography based in QGIS really. So um, uh, share what you do and let us let us have a, a like enjoy, you know, seeing what other people are making and uh, go and play and have fun you know QGIS doesn't have to be only for serious work you can use it for doing fun stuff as well and um, so enjoy it and thanks for watching and uh, I'm really going to stop tweaking this thing now um, we'll catch you on the next time thanks for watching <laughs>